Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be reading a last episode creepypasta called Loud House Enough is Enough. This creepypasta was suggested by Jessica. Thank you, Jessica, for your suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And for anybody else, if you have any creepypasta suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. And if I read your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the video. So again, Thank you, Jessica, for your suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. The Loud House It's a series where a middle child, Lincoln, has to survive in a family of ten sisters. Yeah, that's the show. Well, what if I told you I found an unreleased dark episode? Well, it happened to me a few days before writing this. It's a bit of a long story. I was surfing the web and came across this website of salvage media known as Digital Fossils. It was a website that carried strange lost episodes of media that were either phone calls, security footage, images, deleted scenes of movies, etc. I had an interest in strange lost pieces of media. So I was curious enough to check out this website. The links were ordered as fossils and then followed by an uppercase word or short phrase with a few numbers. These words or phrases were sometimes nonsensical and unrelated to the website entry and sometimes they made sense. For example, fossil dog 807 fossil help 9482 and fossil don't look 370 some of the entries on the website were slightly disturbing for example a recording of a cat playing with a dead bird or a news report of a child going missing on an abandoned playground i didn't know how the website recovered these pieces of lost media but it had almost everything that it could get its hands on however i stayed silent about that i didn't work on the website anyway however as i scrolled down after seeing some entries i found something that caught my eye fossil loud 11 it was rather interesting it had a word that reminded me of the ones from earlier that were randomized but it had 11 after it it reminded me of lincoln loud the same 11 year old boy from the show i just talked about earlier i clicked on the link and saw the description of the entry the description said the following this is the last episode of the loud house which is titled as enough is enough it was meant to be the final of the third season, but scrapped it after its production was done. Chris will be planning another season 3 final at the moment. However, the replacement is reasonable. The episode was lost for being too disturbing and dark for the series. If you are a fan of The Loud House, we must tell you that this is no joke. Viewer discretion is advised. I was curious. I wondered why would this be for a show like The Loud House to have such an episode like this. So after I downloaded it, I started the episode. When the episode started, the usual intro played. Nothing was wrong so far. However, in the end, nobody went to the couch to watch the TV. It then act like they were there as well. So Lily's Poo Poo wasn't present. Another thing that was wrong was that the ending logo was tainted with the color of pastel red instead of orange. The website was not joking around. There was definitely something wrong with this episode. The title card had a black background with white fog flowering across the left of it with 
Centering text saying, enough is enough. The bottom bubbles below show it who made the episode as well, which was the same as the first two seasons. The music was a low, rumbling noise that was a little ambient, something that you may hear in a horror game. The episode began with the outside view of the house, as it sometimes did. The music was ambient, like the beginning of brawls in the family. It cut to Lincoln watching the television instead of playing video games like he usually does. He was just chilling. Don't you just hate living with 10 sisters? Well, sometimes I do, he said. I saw his face turn upside down. But on rare occasions, I go a little too far. I wish that they would just leave me alone, but I can't hurt them. They're my siblings. I want to love them, but the things they do are like a setback for me. Lincoln sounded a little more serious than normal. Hey bro, Luan said as she appeared next to Lincoln in the next shot. What did Platypus say before leaving the bar? Put it on my bill. Lincoln frowned as she left. Yes, Luan, pretty funny. Do you want to smell my flower? I'm not falling for her. Then Luan's flower sprayed water on Lincoln's face before he could finish what he was saying. Okay, Luan, that's... Do you want some of my banana ice cream pie? Luan said before slamming it on Lincoln's face. I wondered why the description said that this episode was too dark. Luan was making so many jokes that it made the episode more stupid than graphic. Lincoln's face palmed in dissatisfaction. Stop Luan, you're not funny. What do you call a boy who's completely white? A flower boy. Luan laughed for a bit. But one shot later, Lincoln slid his hand off of his face, revealing his angry eyes. Enough is enough. Lincoln said furiously as he grabbed Luan by her shoulders. Wow, nice grip bro. You should work out at the gym. Luan laughed at her little joke. Then something happened. It took me back to the shot of Lincoln. It felt as if I was hit by a train. Just after Luan laughed at her little joke, Lincoln slammed her head against the wall, bruising her and knocking her out. A low ambient tune played in the background. Lincoln grasped and stared at the crack in Luan's head and then at her purple bruised unconscious body. He looked at his hands in fear. Well, what have I done? I've never done something like this before. He looked back at Luna. But this made me feel so alive. For some reason, I've never felt this good in a while. I know just what to do. It cut to black for three seconds, transitioning to Lori texting on her phone, possibly to Bobby. Hey Lori, can you drive me to the comic store? Uh, just do it yourself or get mom, Lincoln. Lori left the room, which I assume was to go to the bathroom, and Lincoln looked at her phone, which she left inside, glaring as he planted his next wipeout. One shot later, Lori was seen walking into her room when Lincoln let go of my phone, right? But before she could finish her sentence, Lori was hit in the head by her phone as it broke with the shattering of glass. Lincoln walked over to her body and looked it down on her. This is for smashing my VR console, teenage brat, Lincoln said with silent anger as it cut to Lori's lifeless body. Her phone was shattered, with bits of glass scattered across her face. She was bleeding across her face on where she was cut. I was shocked to see the middle child 
go on such a killing spree like this? Why was this made? I thought to myself. It cut to black, yet again to change to a different scene taking place in a backyard. Hey Lincoln, wanna wrestle? Sure, why not Lynn? I better win this time. I knew this was going to be no wrestling match, but I kept watching to see where it would go. As Lincoln was wrestling with Lynn, he got behind her and shortly after, cut to a close up of Lynn's eyes. Come at me bro. Lynn's anticipation was sh cut short when she not only widened her eyes but gouged. I knew something went wrong. The dark tune grew louder. It cut away from the close up to show Lincoln choking the 13 year old sister from behind. Not only that, but the animation quality changed to a style very similar to that of King of the Hill. It looked so shocking that it didn't look as cartoony as before. I watched it as Lynn gripped her brother's hands to break free. It was useless for her to escape. It cut to Lynn's point of view as she was turned around face to face with Lincoln. This is when I felt like I was going to faint. Lincoln's face looked menacing, cold and possessed at this point. His eyes were bloodshot, his pupils were larger and his skin was a tad bit darker. The animation at this point went back to the normal style but his face was still highly detailed. In Lincoln's pupils was a reflection of his choking sister, Lynn. I watched it in shock as her version went blurry and her eyelids opened and closed. By this time she had her eyes shut. She was done. It was over for her. The gloomy music stopped. The next shot went to Lincoln sitting in the dark with Lynn's body next to him. A different low tune played. Lincoln looked at his sibling's body with a pleasurable look on his face. After 30 seconds, he spoke. Sleep tight, Lynn. You're free. I got chills as he said those words. Lincoln had snapped and he was no longer the man with a plan. He was now a corrupt soul. I wonder who's next for the axe. He wondered to himself as he looked up. With a planning smile, thoughts came to him. The video suddenly turned black and white. Lincoln pulled Lenny closer to him with a pair of scissors in his hands and glared to Lola with a bat in his hand. He was seen smashing Luna's guitar on her face and about to set Lucy on fire. It cut black afterwards. A line of white uppercase text spelling one week later faded in after five seconds. It was clear that one week had passed. It was nighttime again when the text and the black screen faded out. Lincoln was staring at the bodies of his now dead sisters, which were under his bed. To name a few of their fates, Lily choked it on what I assume is a small toy and Lola was cut in the face multiple times. I'm not going to get into the rest of the sisters though. My job is done. All I need is one more, but who is it? He said, looking around. Yes, it must be me. There is something that I must do, Lincoln said as he looked down. As it cut to black for 10 seconds, Lincoln was now seen hanging from the ceiling, his back turned against the camera. I felt bewildered. All of the loud siblings are dead. All because Lincoln has snapped, and it built up to this moment. Lincoln had to kill himself in order to join his sisters. Well, not all of his sisters. Just after a silent 12 seconds, Luan slowly got out of Lincoln's bed and panted heavily. 
It was a relief that she didn't die. Like I said way earlier, she was knocked out, not dead. Her wounds were still present. She was a bit paled, and a bit more blood had dripped down her face, but not entirely. She looked at Lincoln and back at her sisters, which were now lifeless corpse. This is no joke, Luna said softly as she witnessed her first mass murder. She stood for a moment before limping outside, possibly to tell her parents what happened. Afterwards, the camera panned slowly to Lincoln's hanging body. Then it cut to a black room with Luna crying. Then she grabbed a needle and stabbed her eyes out with the needle. Then she grabbed the kitchen knife and stabbed herself in the stomach. Blood was flying everywhere. Then Luna fell to the ground. It faded to black, indicating the ending of the episode. The credits had an eerie ambient tune and the background was the same. White fog from the title card black background and moving left. But it lasted a little longer. As the credits stopped, the screen went black and an echoing high tune rang for about 12 seconds. Questions still rang through my head. Why was this episode made? What happened to lead Chris Savino, the creator of the show, to make this? The episode had to have something to it. I just knew it had to. I tried doing some research on a certain episode, but nothing was found on this specific episode. I went to bed after spending 25 minutes of useless research because no other website had anything of the episode. I still had some nightmares of that episode. Lincoln standing there with his cold, angry, bloodshot eyes and overly detailed face. He did nothing. He just watched. He just watched me as I slept. I always turned on my lights after those nightmares happened. I didn't want him to strangle me, slam me against the wall, whatever he could do to end my life. I didn't go back to Digital Fossils for a week because of that episode. I didn't mean that I was done with it though. I just hoped that I would someday find some information about that episode, like who suggested the idea for this episode. However, here was the real question. How did they get away with making such an abysmal episode?